Welcome to Finding Certainty with your host and U.S. Army veteran, Patrick Lang. Over the next hour, you'll learn from Patrick and his expert guests how to attract more certainty into your business and your life. Now, here is your host, Patrick Lang. Welcome to Finding Certainty. Appreciate you spending a little bit of your Friday morning with us. I have a special guest this morning, and I'll tell you, just as by, by way of introduction, it's it's not very often that I have the same guest on more than once. Uh, there's so many interesting and just accomplished people out there, so uh, it's pretty hard for me to be convinced or even consider having someone on a second or third time. Well, Mr. James Pelton today, our guest on Finding Certainty was on the show several months ago, and we, there was so much we, we had to talk about. We couldn't fit it all into one episode. This happened uh, not too long ago with Tony Salazar. Interesting enough, both of them were talking, among other things, about crypto and the whole blockchain space and so forth. And so it's very interesting, very um, up-and-coming and cutting-edge arena, of course, and James is an absolute expert. So James, thanks for being here this morning. Really appreciate you, my friend. Thank you for letting me come back on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I had a good time with you last time. And like I said, there's a lot more we can talk about. Um, You know, our show is focused on finding, not just finding, but creating and developing and, and unearthing more certainty in our lives, right? When I was first asked to to launch the show, to be the host here on Finding Certainty. Robert Cellino asked me what the focus of my show would be. And one of the first topics was that if we want to improve, we've got to be willing to evolve. In other words, we have to consider new technologies, new mindsets, new relationships, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's a pretty good lead into the whole world of blockchain because it is new to people, right? It is a kind of that wild west and and this unknown you know sector was it wasn't brought to us by aliens you know how, how what does it what does it do how does it work and you know and it's a it's a it's a but it's a an absolute part of our future if you don't understand it you really should right it's kind of like the internet if, you know when the internet came on people thought oh, what's this internet thing you know and now it's it's so much a part of our lives so i can't even imagine it going away. And I, I believe blockchain is the same, very similar. It's going to be a part of everything we do in a very real sense in the, in the months and years to come. So um, would you agree? I mean, just kicking it yeah. off. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, you would be surprised. I would say most companies are already doing some kind of thing on the blockchain. Um, and you might, might not even know it. You know, to to us, it's just kind of business as usual. But on the back end, Almost every company that I talk with is doing something in the blockchain. I mean, it's really, like you said, it's similar to the internet. At the beginning, a lot of people, I remember being told in 2006, the internet's a fad, it's going to be going away. And, you know, and that's what a lot of people said about crypto and are saying about blockchain. But I think it's, I think it has the potential to change uh, the way business functions, the way finances are done, uh, similar to how the internet did. So I think you're 100% right on that. And it will behoove, um, I, I like to use that word as much as possible, but it would behoove everyone to have somewhat of an idea of blockchain and to get some exposure to it and uh, get involved with it in some way. 100%. I would agree wholeheartedly. And the more I learn about it, the more that is confirmed for me, right? Now, I start out every show by just sharing a couple of reasons why I've invited this guest. I already mentioned James was here earlier. We had a lot more to unpack. But um, ultimately, it comes down to I'm, I'm very interested by blockchain and Bitcoin and, and crypto and the whole space. And I'd like to talk a little bit about that with you. But James is also, and crypto is a big part of that, but he's also an expert in recurring income, in what most of us call passive income or residual income. But James has, in his own life, created multiple streams of income. He's he's gotten a taste of that and then developed it into a, an impressive uh, lineup of income sources that are benefiting him and his own family. And he is now teaching it to others through his platform. And and tell everyone, James, the name of your YouTube channel. How do people find it? 
because I know you have thousands, tens of thousands of, of subscribers and that number is growing every day because you put your money where your mouth is. You actually teach them not just what they should do, but what you have done, which is unique for a lot of coaches out there, right? A lot of people teach what they, you know, they say, if you can't do it, teach it. That's not the case in, in your case, you have absolutely done it and are doing it and, and are living that dream life that comes from having recurring income flowing into your, into your world. So um, what, t- uh, if you don't mind, just uh, right up front, share the name of your channel and let's, let's jump into uh, blockchain a little bit. Maybe uh, I, w- I want to talk a little bit about your past first, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm an engineer, so I am not creative in my naming. I don't come up with creative names like finding certainty or anything like that my YouTube channel is named James Pelton. Um, and that's just, that's how I think it's just, you know, just me. And really I started it. Um, my intention was not even really to teach at all. It was just, Hey, I'm going to start trying some of this stuff. You know, you guys, you've probably seen all these different ads that pop up for make passive income doing this, make passive income doing this. And I would see all the same types of ads. And, you know, when you click on one of these ads, like on Facebook or whatever, now you get bombarded with them. And my Facebook feed is nothing but all these different passive income ideas. And I was (laughs) like, you know what? How many of these actually work? How many of these don't work? Uh, How many of these are just straight up scams? And I was like, you know what? I have some money, um, which we'll maybe we'll talk about my story a little bit, how I got my kind of initial capital to get going with this. But I just started throwing my money at some of these things. And I'm just like, you know, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. I've tried hundreds of different passive income um, ideas. And then what my channel is, I kind of walk through, hey, I tried this one. It didn't work. I lost a bunch of money. Tried this one. It did work. I made a bunch of money. And uh, that's kind of my goal is just to kind of weed through that for people who have a little bit less capital to experiment with. And then I can kind of bring out, here's the cream of the crop. None of it's financial advice. I'm not saying get into these things, but here's been my experience with these different avenues. So yeah, my uh, YouTube channel, James Pelton, you can go uh, hit me up there. I do have a new uh, kind of passive, it's called Passive Income Engines. And it's me and a few other Christian guys got together and just put all of our I found three other Christian guys who were doing the same thing, kind of experimenting with all these different passive income ideas. We put this together and created passive income engines. So you can check that out at passiveincomeengines.com. So that's how you can find me. Fantastic. You know, I I love it when you talk about, well, obviously your faith comes into everything you do. Uh, Our last episode, we talked at length about what drives you and God first, family second, business third, and and I, that resonates with me and and many of our listeners, I think, would agree, whether you're a Christian or Muslim or a, or Jewish or whatever, if you are if if you are driven by and founded in your faith and the principles that come out of that, I think invariably you make better decisions. Now, to your point, you're still going to make mistakes. You're still going to have trial and error. You're going to have those those uh, you know those chances or those options, those those ideas that failed, right? We've all been there. I don't think there's any successful entrepreneur out there who hasn't gone through failure because failure is part of that learning process. And it's most definitely a part of investment learning. Oh, yes. Right. I mean, if there's someone out there who has actually never failed, I, you know, I, I, I think they have failed. I think they've missed out on the learning opportunities. They're probably lying for one thing, but, <laughs> but they're, 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 they've missed out on or missing out on the growth and the wisdom that comes from that. Yeah. Um, so people say, well, what do they say? Fail is an acronym first attempt in learning. Um, and failure is really right. the, and the more painful, the failure too, the more the lesson actually hits home and you actually learn it. Um, I've tried to tell people, you know, the Bible's the book of Proverbs says wealth obtained hastily dwindles but he who gathers little by little will increase it. So basically the Bible says, don't go after getting rich quickly. It does not work. And I've tried to teach that principle um, to a lot of my audience. I've said it over and over and over again. Don't try to get rich quickly. It does not work. Wealth obtained hastily will will leave hastily. But uh, regardless, people still, they blow past that lesson and they find an opportunity. They're like, Hey, this says I can make a million dollars in three months. And they put their money into it. They lose their money. And it takes that losing that failure to actually, for that lesson to actually hit home, uh, in people's hearts. So yeah, I'm very thankful for the failures I've gone through. 
Um, again, I, I've i gone through a lot of failures, like you said, in crypto and in investing and in business, um, which maybe we'll talk about here in a minute, but I would not trade those failures. The lessons I learned from those were invaluable. I couldn't have paid any amount of money to get those. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, you know, and, and people wonder why they lost their money on the the uh, program that promises a million dollars in three months. You know, I'm, I'm, there might be something in that, right? Yep. Um, well, and it's not unusual. I mean, we get the dollar signs in our eyes and then kind of all reason can leave you for a little bit. Um, and you start making plans. You start dreaming about, oh, what would I do with a million dollars in three months? Um, and again, that's just one of those lessons that we all have to learn. Hopefully you learn it when you're young and you, with you know less money, then I see some people who are in their 60s or 70s and they learn it then. And that's a little bit more hard to re uh, recover from. But yeah, it's a lesson we all have to learn. For sure. You know, it's and it's different. Uh, there's different reasons, right? We're out of desperation. We need something. We're we're at our ends, our, our wits end. You know, we're fast approaching retirement, so we don't have a lot of time. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons why people are looking for those opportunities and hoping they find them but but it does take time and i think even as much as it takes time it also takes understanding and that's why a, a coach like yourself or an expert who's done it who's been there done that been down that road can sh can help shorten learning curves and help someone avoid the pitfalls and the uh the mistakes that you made right that's the value of mentorship why that's so important because it mm. can, while it doesn't make it a get rich quick scheme or an opportunity necessarily, it can shorten the learning curve and it can help a person avoid at least some of the pitfalls and the mistakes and the and the uh, the more painful <laughs> learning experiences along the way. Absolutely. So let's we we talked about this on the last episode. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but just briefly maybe recap how you started your career and now your business. You. I know you're an engineer originally. You worked in software and that, that that arena. You eventually developed your own uh, tech stack. But maybe just tell you a little bit of your story, if you would, where you're from. And yeah, and absolutely. So I'm in a small town, Roca, Nebraska. So right outside of Lincoln. We're actually we're in about eight inches of snow right now, with a low of negative twenty tomorrow. So oh, uh, I would not recommend uh, Nebraska in winter as a place to visit. Um, it's not, not, a, not a great place, but I grew up here, um, live here. I'm a, a software developer by trade. So I was going around helping different businesses when the internet was kind of first going, e-commerce was first going, I was going around helping different businesses set up e-commerce stores. Um, I faced a lot of pushback, people saying, no, the internet's a fad. It's going away. And I'm like, please trust me. You want an e-commerce store. Um, and many, many companies told me no. And then later came back, they kept my number and called me back later saying, Hey, you're right. We need an e-commerce store. So, um, <laughs> I spent a number of years doing that. Um, eventually I decided I did not like having a nine to five job, um, working for an employer. This happened when my daughter was born and we wanted to go to frozen, a frozen, uh, special. This was when the movie frozen first came out 2012 or, and, uh, it was a Tuesday afternoon. I went to my boss and I said, Hey, can I go watch frozen with my daughter? And he said, no, we need you in the office. And at that moment, I said, you know what? I don't want to have a nine to five anymore. I want to I want to go see a movie with my kid when I want to go see a movie. That's so right. then I became obsessed with a side project. So I would work my nine to five during the day. But at night, I would stay up into the wee hours of the night coding different side projects and software ideas I had. Um, and a number of them failed. Um, so I, I had maybe eight software projects that didn't do anything before I finally wrote one. Uh, it's called Mobile Text Alerts, and was it sends out software sends out mass text messages, and then uh, that took off. I started getting a lot of people contacting me. Ended up Steak and Shake contract, um, Ghirardelli Chocolate, Kawasaki. I ended up with these big, big contracts. Um, hired twelve employees, and then sold the business in 2020 for seven figures. Um, so that's kind of uh, that was my success, and now I had this money. And that's what led me into my YouTube channel, into investing, and into the passive income plays that I do now. Well, as they say, it takes 20 years to be an overnight success, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and really hard work. I Some people think, you know, they see my channel and they think, oh, this all came very easily. But it was a lot of hard work. Um, again, I did not get rich quickly. It was late hours into the night. Um, and it was really, it's all about providing value to people. 
Um, that's where money, money follows value. So whether you're looking at side hustles, starting your own business, passive income, you always need to look at where is value being provided because that's where money is going to be. Money's going to flow where value is provided. So that's probably the number one lesson um, that I learned through all that time. It's definitely a lesson of um, creating certainty in your life is understanding that, remembering that, you know, as much as we talk about um, the value of mentorship and of having you know, someone that can help shorten your learning curve, someone that can help you avoid those pitfalls. There is really something to be said about putting in the time, right? About being in the trenches because you learn different lessons when you have to go through them yourself, right? You learn um, the the intricacies and the ins and outs and the and you know how to pivot, how to be water off a duck's back, and how to how to uh, recalculate as we, you know, we think of GPS, uh, you know, my wife is, she's the best witness of the multiple 18 hour days, you know, all nighters and so forth that I have put into our business that most people have no idea of. They don't really, even people who are partners of mine, who are maybe investors in the company or, or are, are affiliates across the country. They really, once in a while, they get a sense of it because they get an email from me or a message at three in the morning, but they really don't have any idea or any understanding of how many late nights and hours and blood, sweat and tears has gone into it. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was uh, I would work again by nine to five and then I would hang out with my kids and my wife until, you know, she went to bed at 10 or 11 and I would spend 11 to two every night just coding. Um, we were in a little one bedroom apartment. I remember my wife telling me she bought me a quiet keyboard because I was always up in the middle of the night typing and it was keep her awake. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of hard work. Uh, there's another proverb, hard work brings profit. Mere talk leads only to poverty. So if you're wanting to get ahead financially, but you're not wanting to put in some hard work to make it happen, that's not a recipe for success. No, and it's, I think it's a, uh, it's a hollow victory even if it does happen so, you know you hear of lottery winners and others that their money's gone millions of dollars are gone in in no time i believe it's because while it may have changed their life and blessed their life momentarily that it didn't come with the same substance and 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 sacrifice that that led to that that wealth and so it's fleeting um Really appreciate the verses. They're, uh, they're they're eternal principles, right? This is not something that you're just making up and as you go along. These are principles that have been taught and and illustrated since the beginning of time. And if you can figure out those, I call them eternal principles, but those lasting principles, another secret for finding more certainty in your life. <laughs> So, uh, James, we are already up against our first break. Uh, it's amazing how fast the time the time goes by. But uh, we're visiting with James Pelton. He's a very popular YouTube influencer. Uh, has tens of thousands of subscribers who listen to him every week about how to create more passive income in in your life. And so, uh, when we get back from our quick break here, I wanted to dig in a little bit into crypto and blockchain and continue that part of our conversation. And then maybe you can share a few tips for our listeners on how they too, albeit uh, it's going to take work and albeit that may take a little longer than you think it will, but how they too can create passive income. So thanks for being here, James. Really appreciate you, my friend. And we'll be right back, everybody. Don't go away. Sounds, sounds great. All right. Perfect. Good job, guys. I'll clear back in two. Thank you, Andrew. So yeah. on, our, on our YouTube channel, they get the behind the scenes. So uh, you mentioned. There you go. I was so going to This mention... isn't the time to do anything embarrassing. <laughs> <Yeah>. so. <laughs> Don't, uh, you know, blow your nose or anything. But <laughs> the uh, um, you made an interesting point and you talked about how you wanted to go to that event for your, your daughter, um, you know, middle of the afternoon. And your boss said, no, I don't know if you quit that day or you just missed it and had to delay it. And then said, uh, this is it. This was the breaking point. But. Um, I believe that when somebody truly creates their own thing, right, whether it's an affiliate opportunity or their own business, whatever the case might be, I believe that that time factor 
very quickly becomes as important, if not more important than even the income, right? Because you know, I, I just took a whole month off in December. I was gone in, we, we were in Fiji for a couple of weeks. We were in Hawaii over Christmas. And, you know, that's not something I would have been able to do if I had a job, right? As a business owner, as an entrepreneur, I can work from anywhere, you know, you homeschool your your kids, so mm-hmm. you're not tied to a school schedule and have to get them out of school and have to deal with all of that. You can go to Europe for a month if you want, spend a, a you know, go on around the world cruise and, and bring the kids with you if you want. And isn't that one of the biggest benefits in your mind? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why we did it. That's why we homeschool the kids largely. Um, again, like I said, we just got back from Great Wolf Lodge. And on the weekends, it's like 400 bucks a night at Great Wolf Lodge. But if you go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's like 70 bucks a night because (laughs) nobody else can go because the kids are in school. We're right after Christmas break. The kids are in school. Everybody has to work. But we homeschool and I work from home, you know, work for myself. So we were able to go. Nobody else there. Um, So, yeah, that that time freedom. And, you know, honestly, my salary held me back because I was making so much as a software developer. I, my entrepreneur journey would have been sped up if I had a worse nine to five job because I could have replaced, you know, 30 K a lot faster than I could replace 150 K a right. year. And um, so I, I totally agree that freedom is what I was after. Yeah. That's that fear of missing out or it's that fear of giving up that security. And yeah, it, it, there is security in that, I guess, you know, you got your salary and benefits and so forth, but but man, when you take that leap and you start to experience, even if it's tight at first and you have to sacrifice and you'll never go back because it's it's just not worth it. Yeah. All right, guys, well, then, we are coming back. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Coming back. You are listening to Finding Certainty with Patrick Lang. Have a question for Patrick or his guests? Join us on the show at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now, back to the show with Patrick. Welcome back to Finding Certainty. We're visiting with James Pelton. He's a popular YouTube influencer and a uh, speaker, um, host, coach. I mean, the list goes on, James. I don't know what what (laughs) don't you do, but... Uh, really, your area of expertise is in crypto and also passive income. Crypto is a big part of that, but uh, there's many ways to earn passive income, not just in the blockchain arena and crypto world. But um, let's talk a little bit of, I, I want to get into passive income, but let's talk a little bit about blockchain first. So, do you mind just explaining what blockchain is and and why it's turning heads all over the world, just from a business standpoint first, and then we can get into some of the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah, absolutely. And this, you know, you asked me this, I could monologue on this for a couple hours. So I'll try to make it brief and to the point. Uh, But basically, so Bitcoin is built on blockchain technology. Blockchain is essentially, it's an immutable ledger, okay, which is just fancy words for it's a public um, list of transactions that no one can ever change. Okay, and this is unique because up to this point, you know, if your bank has a database or if you're, you know, Google has a database, it's all private, right? They own the data. No one else can see into their database. No one else can see what's going on. And so blockchain technology has made databases public, but they're also immutable. They can't ever be changed. So they're they're a completely accurate record of data that is publicly available. And so what that's done is it's opened up like Bitcoin, where Bitcoin runs on blockchain. And so you can see who owns every single Bitcoin and it can never be hacked. It can never be changed. Uh, It has to be transferred and sent to the blockchain in order for that to uh, for it to be updated. So what that's done is it's created blo- uh, Bitcoin, which is really just a um, – I'm trying to not use too much jargon. Sometimes I forget what words normal people use and what words are blockchain-specific uh, jargon words. Um, but what it's done is it's created a store of value in Bitcoin where there's 21 million Bitcoin. There can never be any more than that. And so as time goes on and as Bitcoin becomes more popular, there's only 21 million Bitcoin. So the price of Bitcoin goes up. So again, this is very different. Everyone's familiar with the inflation of like dollars, 
where we print more dollars. So the dollar every year becomes less valuable than it was before. And even things like gold, there's a, there's gold is less inflationary than dollars, but there's still gold being mined. They just found $13 trillion worth of gold in Uganda. Okay. So gold even in some regards is inflationary. There's more gold hitting the markets, but Bitcoin is not that way. There's 21 million. It can never be increased. So as demand for Bitcoin goes up, which the, the ETFs um, were just passed by the SEC, which we can maybe talk about that if you'd like here in a minute. Um, but as the demand for Bitcoin increases the value of bitcoin inevitably goes up um, which makes it just a really kind of unique asset class um, that i think is a it's a great investment for people especially here we're very early i think i was reading five percent of people in the world own any cryptocurrency at all um, and so it's a that's a great time to get in if it's a market that is booming and you're the first five percent to get in that's a great time to uh to really capitalize on some of the gains well, as an early adopter, you invariably receive more benefits, right? You receive more upside. Uh, who doesn't want to buy uh, uh, buy into a stock when it's brand new and it goes up? Yeah, uh, you know, you and I are both involved with the uh, this new banking platform, Transact Card, and there were benefits. There's still benefits available to what they call founding digital branch offices. You know, those those uh, franchisees or those uh uh, business owners who have become a part of their ecosystem during pre-launch or, or in the early stages, there there's extra benefits to doing that. You get double the buying power, or you get you know double the return for the first twenty four or for the first twelve months. You get uh, some extra match bonuses, additional earning ability, lower costs. You know, so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting parallel there, and. The thing about blockchain, I think it's it's like the internet we were saying before. It's like Facebook when it first came out. People really didn't understand it. They didn't know what it was and didn't know if they could trust it. And so, you know, but those early adopters are usually the ones who are willing to, you know, kind of step out into the dark a little bit and take take that risk. And and they usually are the ones who see the the greatest return. Now, do you mind explaining just the technology of blockchain a little bit? Because one of the things that's interesting about it it's not just on a server somewhere you talked about google or a bank chase bank or somebody owning the data but it's also not just on one server or one group of servers it is on thousands and even millions of computers or ip addresses all over the world isn't that correct just to break it down for the lay listener Yes. Yep. That's exactly right. So basically a copy of that ledger is on, uh, yeah, like you said, many, many different computers. And that's why it makes it immutable because if you try to go in on your computer, like if I'm running a, uh, uh the, the blockchain on my computer and I go in and try to change something. So I say, Oh, this person has 50 Bitcoin. I'm going to say I have 50 Bitcoin. Well, then that gets submitted to the blockchain and all the other blockchain people, we'll call them, they look at what I did and they say, is that accurate? Is that blockchain that he submitted, that ledger that he submitted, is that accurate to what everybody else has to say? And consensus around the other blockchains, the other people who are running the same ledger, they say, no, that is not the accurate. That's not what the blockchain actually looks like. That's not what the ledger actually looks like. So they reject the changes that I made to the ledger. Um, because it's not accurate. And so that's why it's unhackable because you can go in and change yours and you might even be able, let's say you get a hold of a thousand computers and you're able to change the ledger on a thousand computers. Like you said, this is on millions and millions of computers across the entire world. And as of now, I don't want to say that it could never be hacked. You know, hackers are pretty good at eventually, you know, with quantum computing or so, something like that, who knows what the future is going to bring. But as of now, there's no way for someone to get a hold of enough of the blockchain in order to make those changes. Um, and so it becomes just a very secure. Um, and we also like that it's public because then no one can mess around with things. It becomes a very public record of, hey, this bit Bitcoin started with this person they used it to pay for this with this person, and now it's with this person. And so everyone knows you can look at the blockchain, you can see the flow of funds, and you can see now this person owns this block, this uh, Bitcoin. So it becomes very public and it becomes very immutable. And those are things that just open up a lot of possibilities technology wise.
Well, I love the the fact that it can be hacked, you know, the unhackability of it. I love the transparency of it. I love the 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 fact that there are so many interesting applications happening with it. You know, it's it's really taking the control from the banks and giving it to the people, right? It's taking the control from the you know, the uh, Federal Reserve and, and other places that want to control that money. And they have, and it's it's not always been uh, up front. You know, it's been there's been a lot of corruption, a lot of back, you know, behind behind door deals, and and so forth and so on. And that's not the case with 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 uh, the blockchain. It can't happen. And I love that. I love the transparency. I love the hack and hackability. I love the universality of it. This the the uh, we're in this together. You know, element of it, and uh, it's uh, it's very interesting. But um, you know, there is uh, there is any risk, I guess, with any new endeavor, new venture. Um, but we, uh, you know, we are a uh, we're big fans. I know you are. And- yeah. Can and can I talk to that too? So we're at a really good time for Bitcoin because, um, you know, Bitcoin was kind of started around 2012, 2013. That would be a very risky time to get into Bitcoin. Okay. That would obviously be the most profitable time is getting in, you know, ground zero. But when you're in ground zero, you really are not totally sure if that technology is going to catch on. Is that going to last? So there's the most upside, but there's also the most risk when you get in ground zero. We're at a time now where we are no longer ground zero in crypto. I mean, Bitcoin, um, like I said, the SEC just approved the first Bitcoin ETF, which essentially puts Bitcoin on the stock market. That's an easy way to sum it up. So now Bitcoin is traded on the stock market. Okay, so it is no longer like this brand new technology that may or may not stick around for a while. I mean, this is a publicly traded commodity, just like gold is pretty much. Um, but we're still early. Big deal. Yep. So we're early, but not ground zero. So we're at a really good, if, if you had a graph of adoption to potential profit, we're at a really, really good point where there's not as much risk of it just going out of existence, but we're still at a point where there's a lot of upside still to be had. Um, so I would, I would recommend anybody listening. Um, I don't give financial advice, but I would say get some kind of exposure to Bitcoin. If not crypto as a whole, which we can maybe talk about the difference between Bitcoin and some of the other coins that are out there. But Bitcoin, you know, if if that's all you did was buy some Bitcoin, you're going to make some money from that here in the next few years. Absolutely. And you, you hear about, uh, you know, if you're new to this space, guys, you, you hear about Bitcoin purists, right? There are those that that's all they do in, in crypto. They don't touch any of the alternate coins. There's there's what are called altcoins. Um, the biggest is uh, secondary to Bitcoin would be Ethereum, um, but there are others. You hear of Ripple. You hear of, uh, you know, you. Uh, there's a number of different ones. But um, many people look at the altcoins because they're smaller. They have more upside. They're selling for less, and and obviously they have more. They may have more potential over time. But but to James's point, because of the limited number of Bitcoin. Because there are only 21 million Bitcoin out there, it's like a, a limited printing of a famous artist's work, right? It's about a, a those those pieces of art are going to go up in value because you can't get them anymore. They have to be sold for you to get one. It's similar to Bitcoin. You They're not minting or producing any more Bitcoin. You have to buy it from someone else. And so it's being bought and sold all the time. But... Um, you know, it's really interesting. You talk about being at the per- the perfect point on that bell curve. The early adopters have taken on the majority of that risk, and now it's 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 merging in or evolving into mass adoption. It's a pretty good time to get in on something, guys, if you're ever going to. Yep, absolutely. And I would just say, if you're trying to decide between, like you said, there's Bitcoin, and then there's Ethereum, and then there's kind of everything else below that. Um, but when you're looking at potential upside for an, any kind of asset, you can look at the current market cap and then you can look at the potential market cap. And then that's going to be, you know, that's the potential gain that you have. 
But if you go for something that is too low of a market cap, there's potential for it to just go out of existence. Yeah. So that's where, you know, Bitcoin has a $900 billion market cap, which sounds like a lot. I mean, it is a lot. I mean, $900 billion is, is a lot of money. But in the scope of the global economy, um, that's not a very big asset class. So it's big enough. $900 billion is not going to go out of existence. But we could see a $9 trillion market cap on Bitcoin here in the next 10 years. Um, which would be, you know, your your money 10x. We could see 20x. Now, when you go down the list of the other altcoins, you might get to something. You know, Solana has a 40 billion dollar market cap. So there's a lot more upside in something like Solana. But there's also 40 billion dollars could potentially at some point just go out of existence, like you know. And so there's just this dance you have to kind of do of risk and reward. What's your potential upside? How much risk are you willing to expose yourself to? Um, so for people who are brand new, I just recommend go Bitcoin. It's the easiest to buy right now. Now that there's ETFs, you can go to Fidelity and you can buy Bitcoin now. Um, Robinhood, you can buy Bitcoin. You can buy it anywhere now. That anywhere you can buy stocks, you can buy Bitcoin now. Um, so that's the easiest. But yeah, if you want to dig in more, there's potential, a lot of potential upside on some of these altcoins where you could 100x, you know, on on some of these things. So it's just a matter of uh, getting your risk profile um, worked out with the the gain that you want to make. For sure. Well, other than going and listening to a show like yours, how do you recommend a person who's new to Bitcoin, new to blockchain? How do you recommend they learn about the uh, you know the arena as a as a newbie? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so what I would do first and foremost is uh, go to the just CoinMarketCap.com. Okay, that has a list of all the different cryptocurrencies, and it starts with the top market cap. And then, which is Bitcoin, and then it goes to Ethereum, and then it'll show you all of the cryptocurrencies that have been listed and what their current market cap is. And maybe just go, I wouldn't recommend getting it. If you don't know what you're doing, I wouldn't get out of the top 20, maybe. Those are the ones that um, are fairly stable. You get out of the top 20 or you get out of the top 100, and that's where you run into some where, you know, they a million X in a day. And then they go to zero the next day. We're talking kind of similar like penny stocks when you get outside those top 100 cryptocurrencies where it's like, yeah, there's there could be upside, but more than likely you're going to lose all your money. Uh, but just go to those top 10, top 15 coins and just go to their websites and kind of read about what's their mission. Um, try to learn about their team, who built it, why did they build it, and try to see. Again, I say follow the value. So if you're looking at something, you're like, I don't see how this is valuable. I don't see where there's value. Then maybe that's not the right one for you. Um, and then find one where, hey, I see a lot of value in this. I think this will really catch on. Um, that That's how I would start if I was coming from scratch, uh, other than just going and following James Pelton on uh, YouTube. <laughs> you know, I always say follow uh, the value and then also follow what you're passionate about. See if there's a a coin that's doing something working in a space where it's something that you care about whether it's the environment whether it's you know anti-trafficking or whatever it is you know pick a lane yeah. do your research as james says look into the company and 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 what who they are what they're doing it's a great uh it's a great website uh that you mentioned S share the url again just so people hear it yeah it's coin market cap dot com so all one word obviously coinmarketcap.com yeah great resource for you to uh to learn more as you're getting into it but uh we're up against our next break already um when we come back we're gonna hear a little bit more from james about his story and how he has developed multiple streams of income not just in crypto but in multiple areas he's gonna share a, a couple of tips with you that he's learned over the years, trying to help you shorten your learning curve. And if you want to hear more of them, I encourage you to visit his YouTube channel. There's lots of great videos. He does new ones all the time. But don't go away. Be right back with James Pelton here on Finding Certainty. All right, good job, guys. Good segment. All clear back in, too. Thank you, Andrew. Nice. Time flies when you're having fun, right? That's right. Yeah, it always amazes me how quick it goes by. Um, I was telling you before on the break how I was invited recently to to be on the first episode of a new radio show on Voice America. Um, 
uh, the the host Bonnie D. She's done over fifty shows on rate on live radio. And so she's wow. one most, yeah, one of the most proficient, most accomplished uh, live talk show hosts in the world. And uh, she invited four of us to be on her show to talk about about being on radio. What you know, mm. what it's like. There's one host who's been doing it for about a decade, and one who is brand new. And I'm kind of in the middle, and and uh, it was interesting because we talked about how when you have to show up every week and be prepared, especially in live talk hosts, you know, live radio where you're there's no script, right? You don't know where it's going to go. She said it it really forces you to be on your game, you know, to be versed, to be well read, to be make sure you get enough sleep, <laughs> you know, etc. Oh, I'm into that. And uh, you know, I think I think you you would attest being a host on your show has forced you to up your game and continue to learn and and not just be that teacher who teaches but has never done. You know, you you are speaking from the heart, but you're also speaking from experience. And I, I think it's it, correct me if I'm wrong, but hasn't being a host on on YouTube as you have and having your your show hasn't that in and of itself forced you to become even better at what you do? Oh yeah. Well, I didn't realize when I first got onto YouTube, I didn't realize that people were going to start. I just I just wanted to document what I was doing. And I never anticipated, but over time, people started to look at me for guidance. So they weren't looking at me as, oh, he's documenting what he's doing with his money. They were looking at me and saying, oh, we're going to do what he's doing with his money. And so I had to really shift my mindset because I was coming with seven figures worth of capital. But some some people were getting into the same. They were experimenting the same way I was experimenting, but they were using their life savings on it. And so I had to come. I had to kind of change the direction of my channel and say, "Hey, I never intended for people. If you had five thousand dollars, to go put it into a low cap crypto project. Right. That's not what I would ever do if I only had five thousand dollars in savings. Um, and so I've had to just be more careful and just." Whether or not that's what I intended was for people to follow me. That's what an influencer become. I mean, that's why they're called an influencer. It's because they influence people. Right. Um, and so I've had to just kind of adjust as that's happened in my channel. So yeah, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt here, guys, but we are coming back. All right. Thank you, Andrew. You are listening to Finding Certainty with Patrick Lang. Have a question for Patrick or his guests? Join us on the show at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now, back to the show with Patrick. Welcome back to Finding Certainty. We're visiting with James Pelton, good friend of mine and also uh, an influencer on YouTube, specifically focused on passive income or that's really what you've become known for james that's your that's your passion right as we talk about our our you know going after areas that we we care about and we're excited about um you told a little bit of your story and early in the episode about how you developed this app you were able to sell the company how much work it took but that gave you a little bit of capital to start experimenting right to start testing different passive income streams and i guess in a in just a 60 seconds here would you mind sharing what you learned from that process now as you analyze investment opportunities in different passive income uh you know arenas what did you learn from your trial and error that you now apply as you as you explore new opportunities. Well, do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I've kind of sprinkled them in a little bit here as we've been talking, because one thing that is really cool is I found lessons in business usually apply in other places in life as well. So it's not just like I, none of the lessons I learn are ever siloed, like, okay, I learned something about just this one thing, um, but they're kind of life principles. Um, and a lot of them, like we've talked about, if I had just read the book of Proverbs and just believed what it said, then I could have probably saved myself some of this trouble. But like we mentioned, you have to kind of learn through failure in order to really believe these lessons. Uh, But kind of what I've talked about, first off, I'm less 
uh, less trusting of people when it comes to money. I've seen money do some weird things to people, even people that I have a good relationship with. But when money gets involved, uh, it just makes people different. It changes people. Uh, which is what the Bible says. It says the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. And some by longing for it have fallen away from the faith and pierced themselves with griefs. And I've seen that true, that when money gets involved, especially big sums of money, um, it, it messes with people. And so don't think that you're above that. I always tell people as you're, you know, if you're, I, uh, I like to coach upcoming entrepreneurs, try to help them grow their business. But again, one of the reasons it's good to grow slowly is because you really need to wrestle with what the money's doing to you as a person. And when you're just, when you, like you said, win the lottery and you just have, you know, a hundred million dollars thrown on in your lap, you've not learned the lessons of how to have a hundred thousand dollars, how to have $500,000, how to have a million dollars, how to have $10 million. And so a hundred million dollars in the lap of someone who is only prepared for $10,000 is disastrous for that person. And we read those yes. stories of uh, people winning the lottery and it ruins their life. Um, and uh, so that's one thing I've learned is money messes with people. So be, be cautious about it. Don't lose your generous spirit. Don't lose your contentment. Those are two things that people think, oh, if I had a lot of money, I would be content. And if I had a lot of money, I would be generous. But I'm not now because I don't have any money. And I've seen this in many people. If you're not content with where you're at now, if you're not happy, you're thinking, oh, I need more money before I'm going to be happy. You won't be happy when you get more. It just becomes this never ending chase of, okay, I'm at 1 million, but look over there. That guy has 10 million. Then you're after that. Well, look, that guy has 100 million and you never finish. Um, right. And the same is true with generosity. If you have, you know, if you have uh, $50, and you're not willing to be generous with that. You're hoarding it and saying, no, I need that $50. Then you know what? When you get $50,000, you're going to be the exact same way. Don't think well, that money doesn't change you for the better uh, in those ways. You're absolutely right. I mean, to that point, that's the, yeah. I think that's why the principle of tithing is so valuable, you know, because even as a child, I, you know, I taught my children to give 10% of what they, they, if they got a dollar, they gave a dime. Right. And, and you learn that principle of of giving back, of paying that that paying those dues or paying it forward. It says in the in Malachi, the windows of heaven will be opened up, and Amen. Uh, it will be poured out upon you, you know, more than you can even even comprehend. And so, I think why tithing is so important is it teaches that principle of contentment, that principle of giving back, that principle of of uh, seeing the big picture of not being hyper focused on yourself, but looking outward a little bit more. Uh, anyway, can, continuing on. Yeah, but no, that's lessons you're, you've you're totally right. Good well, stuff. You're totally right. And, you know, I tell people too, this is something again that people don't, you don't believe it until you experience it. But Jesus says it makes you happier to give than it does to receive. And, you know, you hear that as a kid or whatever, and you're like, yeah, right. No, I want to, I want to receive, I want a million dollars. I don't want to give a million dollars. Um, but I, I feel like as you, you know, as you start giving, you start to realize this is true. And, you know, when I, I sold my business for seven figures, I could have sat on my hands the rest of my life and just watched Netflix, um, for the rest of my life. I probably would, wouldn't need to work again, but I found this joy in helping other people in giving to other people. It's like, wow, this is even more fulfilling than growing my business to seven figures. And so now the reason what drives me for, you know, why do I want to keep making passive income? Why do I keep doing side hustles? Why do I, you know, my YouTube channel is a lot of work. Why do I even bother with my YouTube channel? But the joy and the fulfillment of helping other people uh, is, is it is greater than the joy of making money. Um, so that's another lesson I kind of learned through my journey, which again, some people listening are going to say, yeah, right. Okay. Um, because it's some, sometimes you just have to learn it for yourself. Um, but that, that's a, another lesson that I've found to be really true. Well, it's so true. And if you learn it early, if you can learn to give back, you can learn to share. You have this abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset. Even, even when you're just starting in your own journey. You haven't arrived there financially, perhaps, but you're gaining new insights and and lessons. If you'll turn around and teach them to someone else, one, well, you'll retain it more. They say if you teach it, you'll retain a significantly more, you know, greater amount. But 
but you'll have more satisfaction in the process. And you're, I, I think really three benefits come out of it. If you share with others, one, you will retain it. Two, you'll have more satisfaction. And third, you will invariably, um, you will become that person. You will, you will adopt those characteristics. You'll become that character if you, if it's, if, if you do those, th those things. Now, I served a mission for my church for two years in Italy. Mm. Anyone who's served a mission of any kind in Africa for two weeks or in, you know, Moscow for two years, it doesn't matter. Most of those people will come back and say it was the best experience of their life. And I believe it's because they were looking outward and we spent our whole life looking inward, our job, our school, our, our, our income. But if we're looking outward, um, and it, it changes us, right? So, amen. Okay, I so, would. Uh, can, anyway, sorry, can I say one more thing about that? Absolutely. Too, I would. I I would love to challenge people. I uh, my wife went on a missions trip to Mexico, Mexicali, um, over on the California border. And what we think as you know these wealthy Americans is we think, well, we're going to go into these poor areas and we're going to help them out. Um, we're going to bring our money and we're going to just change their lives. And they're all going to be so happy that we gave them all this. When she got there, she was shocked at these people had nothing, but they were so much happier than all the Americans who were coming down to help them. These the, the kids in Mexico were way happier. They had way more joy. They were kicking around their soccer ball with their bare feet, but they had a lot more happiness. And she said, wow, we were way more blessed by them and their contentment. Um, than they were by our gifts. In fact, they, some of the gifts they were like, "Oh, why would we want a cell phone like this? Why would we can play soccer? Why would we want you know a Nintendo or something like that?" And uh, one of the things that I learned from that is we think the purpose of our money is to improve our standard of living. It's like I want to get this, I mean this, and this, and this. Your life gets more difficult, more complicated. The more things that you accumulate, the more things that you buy. Um, and so I, what I always say on my YouTube channel is. You know, try to make more money, not to increase the standard of your living, but increase the standard of your giving. And I got this from Pastor John Piper. He's been a big influence in my life. But it's so helpful and important to keep that in mind as you're in your journey. So true. You know, we talked about learning some investment tips and some passive income tips. And and these are the the, the principles. These are the lessons. If you will... There's a hundred and one different ways to to develop passive income, and and you need to do some research. You need to look at those who have gone before. Learn from people like James and others who are who have been down that road and 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 made mistakes that you don't have to make if you listen and learn from their experience. I encourage you to go to James's channel and and uh, watch some of his videos. You're going to learn a great deal. Um, but these principles of generosity of giving back, of sharing with others, of, of contentment. These are the underlying foundation on which to build, right? If you truly want Amen. certainty in your life, understand those principles first and then build upon them. Yep. Absolutely. We're coming, we're coming toward the end of the show, James, is what would you share in closing just before we run out of time here? We've got another yeah, absolutely. So calls to action. I'm a marketing guy, so I love calls to action. I'm obsessed with them. Um, so calls to action. First off, open up your Bible. Read your Bible. That's going to be my first call to action. Read your Bible. <laughs> Number two, get some exposure to Bitcoin. Okay, those would be two things you can do right now. Go hop on Robinhood. Check with your broker, Fidelity, wherever you're at. Try to get some Bitcoin. Get one of the Bitcoin ETFs. Um, after that, if you're wanting to get more into passive income, Take stock of what you have to offer. And really the two things that that the capital, the resources that most people have is either you have money or you have time. Okay, If you have a lot of money but not a lot of time, then you want to look for passive income investments that you can put your money into. And because there's a lot of people that have more time and they'll use your money to make more money. So find a place to put your capital that's providing value and you'll make some money from that. If you don't have a lot of capital but you do have time, then look for a side hustle. So don't be looking for investment. You're not going to, you know, be able to put $500 into investing and, you know, change your life very much. But find a side hustle. Say I spend 30 hours a week watching television. I'm going to take that 30 hours a week and turn it into 
a side hustle to provide value, then I'll have more money, then I can get into the capital side of things. So those would be kind of my uh, the steps if I was listening and uh, was wanting to get started in some of this. And to that point, we mentioned earlier Transact Card, one of the best uh, passive income side hustles that we've come across in years. Mind just sharing your link to uh, Transact Card, James, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't have it right in front of me. I'll have to pull Transact it up. I should have had that up. Yeah, it's it's uh, jamespelton.transactcard.com, isn't it? Uh, yes, or jamespelton.mytzt.com. Yeah, either one will work. Either uh, one, okay. Jamespelton.transactcard with a Z dot com. You learn how to double your buying power and increase your savings, how to bless your friends, and also the uh, nonprofits in your life. So, James, we're out of time, man. It always goes fast when you're having fun, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, well, I'll have to come back. Maybe I can be your first. Would I be your first three, Pete? You would be. <laughs> Maybe we can work that out here sometime. I'm open to that. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. James, thanks for being on Finding Certainty. Uh, always goes fast, but it's always a pleasure. And uh, looking forward to this coming year together. I wish you the very best. You listeners out there, have a fantastic weekend, and we will see you next week here on Finding Certainty. Thank you, everybody. God bless. All clear. Thank you. Thank cool. you. Man. Take care. Have a great week. Thank you. You too. You as well. I should look it up here. Make sure we gave the right, uh, the right, um, login. I suppose I should have had that ready. <laughs> your URL. <you're, you're, laughs> I think it, I think you use James Pelton. That's your. Yeah. Name. James Pelton is definitely my, I didn't know you could do dot transact card.com, but yes, yeah. it does work. So jamespelton.transactcard.com. Okay, good. Yeah, they changed that. They don't do the MyTZT anymore. They, oh, okay. It'll slip forward to it, but they changed the uh, Transact card. And we didn't even you know, get our, uh, to, to talk about Transact card much, but... Uh, now that's... You know, our last uh, our last video got compliance, made me take it down again. So <laughs> I guess we just had to be more careful or something. Yeah. Uh, I think mine is still up with you. The interview that you and I did um i told them i couldn't do it because they were already live right they're already uploaded mm. to uh all the channels and so forth and so on so um but anyway the uh um you know speaking to uh transact we're still on the youtube video it's you know we were talking about how long it took to learn what you're learning and and failures and and learning experiences and the growing pains and so forth and so on and that's and and every business goes through that, right? Every entrepreneur goes through that. Every, yeah. every investor goes through that. Uh, and yet, I think there are evidences that you're on the right track, right? I mean, in many respects, for me, it just comes down to feeling uh, that confirmation, feeling the spirit in my life, confirming that we're moving in the right direction. Mm. Uh, that, that, you know, they call... Uh, the light of Christ, right? That uh, that confirming they, they refer to the Holy Ghost as the Comforter, right? Well, it's confirming, it's comforting you in the knowledge of who you are and where you are, and, and the direction you're moving and who you believe in, and you know, uh, there, there's there's much more to that. But the uh, but I believe, and I've seen this over the last year with Transact Card, these evidences that we are moving in the right direction. You've mm. seen in your career i've seen the same in mine there's there's signs right there are reminders or confirmations or proofs that you're moving in the right path and i believe it, it applies in investing as well you you it's not to say there's not going to be delays or frustrations or learning experiences and growing pains but it's kind of like a scale right are you do you feel peaceful about the direction you're going? Are you seeing light at the end of the tunnel, right? Are you, are you getting, are you feeling more comfortable or less comfortable? Um, the list goes on. I mean, as you're analyzing your investments and the ventures that you take, and how do you determine if it's one with with more experience under your belt now? How do you determine if it's one worth pursuing? Hmm. That's a great question. I and I don't mean to keep harping on it, but it's really just that value. 
Um, it's just who, where is, where is value being provided? Is this helping anyone in any way? And that's one of the things I like about transact card is I've seen a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people who are anti credit card because, uh, they've seen what debt does to people and rightly so credit cards get a lot of people in trouble. Um, but then they miss out on kind of some of the credit card points and some of the advantages that credit cards bring. And so when I heard about Transact Card, I was like, wow, you can get kind of best of both worlds where you can get some of the benefits of more of a, of a credit card points um, without taking on the debt that a credit card would bring on. And so right. to me, I see, oh, there's a lot of value there that's being provided and so that's something that I want to keep an eye on is like, hey, this could actually help people. So I've learned where I get burned are places where it's like, well, now, who is this actually helping? What's this? What's this Ponzi scheme? Who is this actually benefiting in any way? Oh, no one's being benefited. Oh, that means that there's no value being created, which is means there's no economy. Right. And uh, so that's those are the red flags that I look for. And then, you know, next after value would be revenue. Because revenue follows value, so it's kind of a, a lagging indicator. But you can look at okay, there's value. Now, is there revenue? Where is the there's money being transferred in some way? Where is that coming from? And is it transferred in a way where everyone is happy with that transaction? You know, mm -hmm. if I go to Best Buy and buy a PlayStation Five, Best Buy's happy, Sony's happy, and I'm happy. So it's really a three person. Win, win, um, win. It win, win, win. And so I always look for that. If you're um, working with finances and there's two wins and one loser, then it's like, well, this is not going to work. That loser is probably going to be you unless you're more sophisticated than, you know, these bigger players who are playing around with millions, billions of dollars. Right. Chances are, if you have a thousand dollars and you're getting into a system with millions and billionaires, you're going to be the loser in that system. Right. And uh, so I always look for, yeah, win, win, win. Is everyone happy with the transactions that are happening? So value and revenue are the two the two things I look at. I agree. And I would add to that, and we we can wrap this up. I know you've got lots more to do besides this, but we uh, I look at the leadership. I look at who's behind it. You talked about researching uh, the companies that you're interested in investing. Who's behind them? What's their track record, right? Et cetera, et cetera. And I also, to our point about how much, uh, about one of the reasons we like blockchain so much is the transparency that exists there. One of the things I've liked about Transact Card, even though with the growing pains of this last year is they're trying yeah. to merge these three different industries, franchising and, and direct sales and banking and create a hybrid out of it. It's never been done before. They've been very transparent about what they're going through, the the ways they're pivoting, the corrections they've made, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I've appreciated that uh, about them. I think it's another uh, important principle in in any investment that we're considering. So yeah, yep, absolutely. I totally agree. Um, and I would say how how people respond to unexpected challenges, because you know, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, if you stay at a hotel or you get service from a mechanic or anything there are going to be problems that arise. That's just nothing ever goes completely according to plan ever in any area of life. It's mortality, right? That's it's, an immortal yep, experience. Yep, exactly. That's part of being a human. And so I don't expect completely smooth things when I interact with anyone. When I stay at a hotel, I do not expect my stay to be completely smooth. What I do expect is when there is a problem, how is it responded to? How do they, you know, what do they do when a problem arises? That's what I'm really looking to. Do they take care of me when a problem arises? Do they communicate clearly? Are they transparent? Do they take ownership? Do they try to push other people under the bus and say, well, there's nothing we can do. It's their fault. You know, those types of things. So I agree with you hundred um, percent. Those would all be red flags and anything I get involved with too. So, and I, to your point too, I've seen good things with the transact team where, yeah, there's been some bumps in the road, which I expected. I did not expect, you know, this roadmap, I've been an entrepreneur long enough to know that's not how it works, especially Never. in the finance sector. Um, but they've handled things well, they've communicated very clearly. Um, so yeah, I'm still still pretty happy. And I'm okay waiting, you know, I'd rather it be done right and take longer than rush it out and have a bunch of problems that way. So totally, uh, totally with you. I would agree. I think uh, that response you're talking about how you're taking care of when things happen, which they do inevitably, I think that speaks volumes. It says more about the company than if it had just gone perfectly the first time. 
Yep, absolutely. Well, James, it's always a pleasure, my friend. I'm excited to be working with you on um, Transact Card together and on on everything. I've been watching some of your videos myself. Uh, I'm a student of crypto and blockchain and passive income, and I'm a big fan of having mul multiple streams of income. As we said before, you understand residual income, you will go through a wall to get it. It, it is life-changing, not just the time yeah. freedom, but on the other hand, the income of having money that comes in, shows up every month, or, you know, mailbox money, as they call it, or beach money, as they call it. We were gone for the last month, and our business continued to produce. It continued to to roll in and it continues to get larger and it's that's exciting right and it's the ability to bless your life and that of your loved ones but also to your point to give more and the more you'll give it will come back to you a, a thousandfold in my experience figure that out early even when you only have that fifty dollars figure that out remember it start developing those habits now while you are early in your process, early in your experience, you'll keep those habits and those characteristics in the future and do, go on to do great good. So, Amen. You. Agree with all that. Anything you'd, you'd add at the end? Otherwise, I appreciate your time, man. Nope. I think that is it. Yeah. Just if anybody, you know, anybody wants to chat or um, I open up, I give a link out for people if they just want to get together and pray. I know there's a lot of people that have a lot of financial stresses, um, yeah. and things like that. And I can't always help with the financial stresses, but I'm happy to pray with anyone. Um, I think I prayed with about 96 of my subscribers. So I love doing that. Nice. Um, probably three a day is what it ends up being. So I'm happy to share that link with you too, but come on over to the YouTube channel and, uh, would love to connect with some of you more. All right, bud. Well, have a great weekend. Happy new year. Glad to hear Thank things you. are going well and, uh, my best to you and your, your, your wife and your, your family and, one of these days, I'll have to get out to Nebraska. I told you my grandfather's from Lincoln. Uh, yeah, that's right. Just wait, wait roots. till spring. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't come now. It's uh, I'm trying my best to not go outside for the next ten days or so. So. Yeah, I was on a I was on a call just yesterday with a couple partners, and uh, one of them is in Minnesota, one of them in Kansas, and it was like twelve degrees, negative four degrees. I'm in. Vegas complaining about 50 degree weather. Yeah, and, right. <laughs> and and our friend uh, Brian is in uh, Tampa. He was saying, ah, we were out playing pickleball this morning. He was, we, everybody, <laughs> everybody was complaining. It was 65 degrees, right? Oh, man. Yeah, I, just, what I wouldn't do. <laughs> yeah, we're at a low of negative 20 tomorrow. So that'll be a, be a fun day. So you appreciate the summers and the spring. That's for sure. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, man. We'll stay safe. Stay warm. Be good. Thank you so much. Uh, Take care, brother. Later. We'll see you.